Hey, so I was perusing social network and I found this amazing rig called Urban Warrior by Mark that I absolutely needed to actually bring here to the channel and review. I normally don't do rig reviews here in the channel, but I thought for this one, I need to make an exception. Do let me know what you think about this as you get into this video. If you guys would like more rig reviews, I would be happy to do it. Rigs are always fun and they're always inspiring for you to start the next big shot, right? So without further ado, let's get to it and let's get reviewing. Let's do it. All right, so here we are. And this guy here is the one that I saw um, on Mark's feed on Twitter. So shout out to Mark for making this work and actually spend the time rigging this character to a very high level, I think. I had a little play, but I'm going to basically be discovering this with you guys here in this video as I actually play around with the controllers to see what kind of bells and whistles does this rig has. Now, um, I have hidden all the controllers, but you can see it has quite a lot of controllers. The character is very, very appealing. It reminds me of a character, you know, he's just straight out of Overwatch, I guess. Very, very stylistic. And the shaders are really well put together. It gives you that 2D feel to the whole character. But uh, we're going to start from the main controller because this is normally where all the extra controllers are hidden. See if you can find something here that is interesting. So I'm going to move myself over here to the side and see what kind of things do we have here to play with. So everything is on. It has FK visibility, IK visibility, all of that stuff, finger visibility, arrow. Very interesting. What is arrow visibility? Oh, okay, so this is basically the uh, knee IK to actually showcase the arrows where they are. Really useful when you actually have these things really far away and you don't know where they are. Having the arrows allows you to follow the arrow until you find the locator again. Sometimes it happens, especially on walk cycles. Um, arrow visibility, joint visibility is normally off. That makes sense. Uh, face visibility this is normally on. Um, if you're actually doing just body mechanics, having this off helps a lot, which is really nice. And then extra visibilities, I guess, is going to be all the bells and whistles that might be the deformers and the like, capes and things like that might actually be disabled at this point, which is really cool. For this demo, we're going to leave everything on. So that's really nice. This rig to me specifically is very interesting because it feels very much like a game rig. So for anybody out there, that is looking to actually make their own gameplay uh, show reels, animation show reels. I think this rig will be like really interesting for all gameplay animators to have a play with, um, as you can automatically get that game feel with this character, right? So I thought this guy here was going to be um, in pretty much all game rigs. There's a little controller under the character that basically is the capsule that you can export to game. So I thought that was going to be that controller, uh, which tells me that maybe the character is not ready for Unreal, which makes sense. It's a brand new character. I'm pretty sure somebody at some point will make this Unreal ready or engine ready for it, for you to be able to export it and be compatible with, you know, the Lyra systems and all the capsules and things like that. Okay, so moving up, knees. We have follow knees or no follow knees. This is cool. So for those that don't know, follow knees are normally whenever you actually move your feet, you can actually follow through. The knees are following with the foot as best as they possibly can. Sometimes it can become problematic. If you actually kind of like disable the follow, then it means that the knees will stay put and it will not move with the foot. This is old school. This is how I started animating. So for every single leg movement that you do like this, you then have to go ahead and just make the knee like look as good as possible, which this follow knee is becomes a blessing, right? Um, and then we have lock to the knee and then unlock. This is nice. Okay, so we probably use these things, for example, whenever you have your knee down. Um, this will be interesting, but only when you actually are pushing your animation. Uh, very rarely, but it's, it's nice that by default it's off. Okay, going up now, let me just look at the hips because this, after all, is the most important controller of the rig. So I feel like we have a bit of a stretch and the rig is deforming really well when I actually push it outside of its bounds. That is very nice as well. I forgot about the feet. Let's have a look at the feet real quick. So I think you have a, 
uh, a min and a max for the feet so the feet actually go away from the controller but they also go past the controller that's actually, actually very interesting so if i go and look at the feet controllers we have the main controller and then we have rotate over a certain amount of time so it's like on the pivot of the foot what do we have here oh yeah ball roll and then probably we'll have yeah that twist right at the tip of the foot and here we have pivot on the ball cool all straightforward over here now let me just look at this upper body is it ik i'm guessing it's ik because he only has two controllers oh it's fk fk spine okay cool it's the way i like it um ik spines even though they are really fancy normally have one controller here that you can move and it just bends the whole back and stuff it can be very um complicated to work with for anybody out there that has worked with ik spine that doesn't work very well you know what i mean sometimes this bit here in the bit in the bottom actually starts popping all kinds of weird ways so having an fk spine helps you so much to kind of like get the results that you want and the only thing you really have to do is basically select both controllers as you are blocking things to make sure that they move in tandem and then when you go into spline you can just start kind of overlapping things as you wish all right um what is this guy here hip swinger <laughs> this is really nice so what i normally tell animators is to actually animate the hips themselves to actually get the blocking done and then use something like this hip swinger cool name to actually get a little bit of extra movement to those hips right so if the hips are actually gonna go into the side now you can get a little bit of a of a sway or secondary motion to those hips as you're going to the side right so really nice use it i'm guessing for me at least i would use it for subtlety more than anything floppy bits for some reason is attached to the mesh i thought it was going to be by itself i don't know if this is intentional maybe it's just supposed to to move a little bit but i thought it was going to be an extra piece of geo okay and moving on to the arms so i am a big fan of animating in ik i only animate in ik but for all those that animate in fk let me just get this checked looks good you get your ik you get the rotates on the this is really really cool um so a lot of the time the rotation of the arm sometimes comes from the wrist itself which is weird because if you if you stop your arm like from rotating here it's almost impossible for you to rotate your wrist without rotating your upper arm right like that but sometimes a lot of rigs actually rotate here on the wrist only and this bit here as you can see that is moving now doesn't really move which makes it weird you can quickly feel like you're actually breaking your wrist so rigs that actually rotate from here from like in between the arm so you have more of a natural twist help you a lot to get that naturalistic feel of the animation and this one does it which is really nice right the rotates on this axis can definitely be on one as you can see here uh, it happens on the wrist only but this one's specifically they need to actually happen on a higher level and then fingers let me see so we have two options to actually pose your fingers uh, obviously you can select the controllers old school and then go ahead and just bend your fingers or you can select this big controller and then bend it i'm much much bigger fan of just adding this and what i normally do um, I actually pose them really quickly with something like this. This is why I like the the uh, flexibility to have both systems because you can actually get something that looks you know rough um, and, and and ready just like this. Uh, you can spread them, you can actually get them uh, closer and then you can also cup the, your hand if you need to. And then when you get something slightly like rough like this, then you can start kind of like manipulating your hand to look better, right? So now I would go in and make sure that my fingers are starting to look like natural and good. I'll probably, I'll do a lot of this kind of stuff. Like I try to look at my hand as I'm doing things and I start to kind of like pose it the way I think it looks best, or at least my hand is telling me how it looks best. And then just take it from there as you start kind of like manipulating your hands and making sure that they look as sweet as possible as you go through it, right? This thumb most likely needs some, some action right here. No, here. 
Do you only have two controllers for the thumb? Can you translate it? Huh. Yeah, so I think there's something that I would like, at least personally for this, is basically have another controller right here on the top, because if I want to get this thumb to actually go from here to here, just like that, right? I cannot do that at the moment. I can only do this and get, I cannot do it, can even do it, can I do it? Yeah, I can only do this, but I cannot do that. So maybe if you actually get the cup controller, let me see, can I get more of a, oh no, the cupping is just happening on this, on this tiny fingers. Yeah, I think, I think we need another controller right here on top to allow for that translation to get the thumb closer, right? Um, to have this kind of movement. That's the only thing that I found bad about this rig, which is awesome. By the way, like this kind of like reviews or rig reviews are super common in games. This is the kind of stuff that we do early on in development to find out how good the rig is and put it is stress tested. Normally starts from the director or lead. Somebody will actually look at it like this and then basically be like animators here, have a play. Let it let us know what you think. And then, you know, nine times out of 10, what happens is that they actually kind of like start finding all kinds of stuff that are not good enough. <laughs> so let me just go into IK, uh, sorry, FK, FK, IK blend. There you go. So this is the mode that I like to work on. And this is looking really good. As you can see in IK, you get much more of that wrist looking um, more organic in different axes because uh, things are a bit more complex in IK, but also more awesome. Now on the elbow, I like to keep it follow as best as I can. So I can also follow just like the knee. I like to follow slightly closer so things don't actually spaz out so much. But yeah, following is really good. So you can make your life a little bit easier. Okay, so let me see the shoulders. Shoulders are always problematic on rigs, always problematic. Yeah. I mean, it's not bad. The fact that the cloth moves with it and it doesn't intersect the neck too much, I actually like it a lot. I think he adds a lot of dynamism as you actually were. You know, if you were to walk, you can actually see the cloth moving or give the impression that the cloth is moving, which is really nice. And then you have some secondary controllers on the cloth itself, which looks cool. And over here as well, that looks cool too. Has some intersection. As long as you're careful, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be fine. And this as well. And what's the max? Yeah, you can actually take it off quite quite far. Really nice. Really cool. And then the cape. Do we have a master controller for the cape to actually go half K I K? I don't see one. Maybe that's one somewhere that is hidden somewhere, but normally that's that's a controller that goes to would you like IK or FK for the cape? But I guess this maybe this chain is just FK. Let me see. I select it all and yeah so this this is definitely just IK and if I select them inside controller what do I get ah really nice so yeah you, I guess you use the external controllers to actually get the main movement and then when you get that main movement going you will then use the inner controllers to be able to get the secondary motion going on the cape, almost like the flow of it, right? I like that, that's clever. Yeah, so most likely there's no chain IYK because of this. I like it a lot, really nice solution. Uh, and then same thing here, right? So you can move it everywhere you want and then inside of it, you have little controllers to allow for flow. And the hair, this hair looks absolutely fantastic. Look at that. So cool, reminds me of Goku. Lots of stuff that you can do with the hair. I can even like translate it, right? Not only rotate it, but translate it as well. So you can get lots of squ squash and stretch if you like. This is, I'm guessing, the main head controller. Really nice. Neck controller moves the whole head. Really nice. And then you can just basically overlap your hair, your hair to your heart's content because there's a lot to actually work with. Now let's have a quick look at the face. I 
it's incredible how as soon as you start moving the eyes the character looks like it's alive right immediately even though there's no animation in the character as soon as i start doing this you start seeing that he's actually so alive all of a sudden it's crazy like everything starts with the eyes all right so in terms of the face you have oh nice you can do a lot with this oh, and you can bop the head at the top only <laughs> Well, I'm guessing this bottom is basically just like a regular. Yeah. And you can rotate it as well. Really nice. All right. Beard. Oh, yeah. And the chewing controller. Nice. Eyebrow. <laughs> well, I guess you can shape up the eyebrow to actually make it a little bit more evil. That's really nice. And yeah, another shaper as well, and another shaper here as well. Yeah, lots of stuff. I think you can actually go ahead and just do cinematics with this as well. So gameplay and cinematics. It will be a rig like this exactly that we do using gameplay, because uh, it's flexible enough. If you don't want to have fancy um, cinematics, um, or if you want to use the same rig for both gameplay and cinematics, something like this would be ideal. So the gameplay animators, the first thing they would do is probably go here, and then go like face visibility off and then they just use use the, the body and then for cinematics animators then they will actually use all of this stuff including the face to make sure that it looks really nice but you need those bones there so you can start animating them as best as you possibly can um but yeah it's a really good rig really awesome looks incredibly sturdy I guess I would have to actually play with it properly and animate them to actually see if there's anything broken except for those fingers uh, for the thumb, um, I don't see anything bad or actually incredibly like broken with the rig. Uh, looks incredibly awesome. And something that I forgot to check is how to parent this weapon to a hand. Another thing that we do as well is basically like have some kind of system to be able to parent and unparent things. So if like this sword was on his um, hips or on his back for whatever reason then we can actually just basically animate the sheath and then basically get that to follow because the, we the weapon will always be there but at some point he's going to take off uh, take out his sword and then we want that to be parented to the hand so like you know something that i've asked many times is like can we have a parent switch so here they actually give you one mark mark gives you one so now he's parented to a hand i think is the is it the right or left hand let me see Okay, doesn't seem to be working. Can I, if I move the character fully? Okay, so it might be in IK only. Let me see. Yeah, it's an IK only. <laughs> uh, so that's definitely something that uh, also needs to be addressed uh, if Mark is watching this, obviously. But yeah, it seems like in FK, in IK, it doesn't really follow the hand right there but uh yeah so for all the ak animators that will definitely be like a like a, a no-no but yeah as you can see like obviously the weapon here is like it's not set up properly so you would have to actually get that weapon correctly in his hand and then like you know just roughly there and uh and then you can see that you know whenever you actually kind of like move the hand is awesome also uh for, if mark is watching this it will be good to have a left hand and right hand right because at the moment he's holding it with the left hand it'll be good to have a choice between the two hands as we parent so sheath right hand left hand and that's it. <laughs> I think Mark has done a brilliant job with this rig. It looks a lot of fun. I'll leave a link down below. Go and download it. It's free. So go and grab it as you can, for as fast as you can, because I'm pretty sure there's going to be many animations out there done with this rig from now on. That's all I had. Thanks a lot for my Patreons for the support. Thanks a lot for everybody watching this video now. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. Um, definitely um, hit the bell button and drop a comment down below. Tell me what you think about this rig. And if you have links to other rigs that you'd like me to review, then definitely drop them down below if you'd like me to actually continue this rig reviews. And that's all. Have a great rest of the week. And until next week, stay well, stay safe. Peace.